Titanic, one of the world's most enduring stories. She permeates our collective consciousness. Her name and the lure of her tragedy are everywhere around us. The Titanic was a technological wonder, a ship of unparalleled majesty. She was the embodiment of the spirit of her time. Her passengers were from across the spectrum of society, the rich, the celebrated, and the humble, seeking a new life in a new land. The loss of the Titanic was the first international news story, a story that continues to resonate to this day. RMST Inc. has been delivering the story of the Titanic to the world through fascinating exhibitions, allowing people to experience her story and those of her passengers through the recovery of ship artifacts and personal belongings. The effort to recover and preserve these relics has been monumental. It has taken seven deep sea recovery missions, tens of millions of dollars and countless man hours, not to mention the risk of many lives. Cutting edge technology like manned submersibles designed to probe the ocean depths two and a half miles beneath the ocean's surface, sought artifacts in the chaos of the wreckage. Once an artifact was discovered, robotic arms extended to carefully retrieve the object in a collection basket and return it to the surface. It was quite a feat, and yet it has brought to life the myriad of lifestyles and cultures that merge together on this incredible vessel. The bountiful display of treasures uncovers more of the mystery for its fascinated audience with each piece whispering its role in the tragedy. The Crow's Nest Bell, struck by Lookout Fleet to sound the alarm of ice right ahead. The Steering Wheel, spun by Quartermaster Hitchens, a moment too late to avoid the collision. The Navigating Light, which tapped out Morse code in a vain attempt to call rescue vessels in time. The exhibition displays tell vivid stories of lost dreams like those of first-class passenger Mr. Saafeld. The apothecary vials he brought on board were once filled with floral perfumes and Saafeld's high hopes to start a new fad in America. They present romantic tragedies like those of Mr. Rosenshine, whose traveling receipts narrate a tale of exotic travel with his mistress, which extended to the corners of Asia India and Egypt. There are expositions of ordinary passengers as well, like Franz Paulbaum, who was sent to Paris to build a carnival ride. His hand tools, bilingual dictionaries, and stock certificate rewarding work well done express the practical sentiments of a working man homeward bound. The Titanic was designed to be a seagoing palace, and she easily lived up to that reputation. Exquisite cut glass windows formed a wall of sparkling crystal in the first class dining room, a first on any ship. The elegance of the old world and the technology of the new was carefully matched. This bronze cherub stood at the foot of a staircase to light the way, its torch now lit by electricity. These artifacts are just a sample of over 5,000 titanic relics now held in the RMST collection. Objects recovered from the deep sea would disintegrate without special treatment of the most painstaking kind. In fact, the titanic artifacts are the deepest yet recovered of their kind, requiring whole new techniques for their preservation. The conservation of these treasures has been no easy task. The company has built a team of the world's leading conservatory and material specialist to watch over these objects. Once on deck, a team of experts quickly identifies the materials used, and each artifact undergoes a tailor-made conservation regime, vital for its long-term survival back on land. All of these efforts were in preparation for the latest and most challenging mission of all, Expedition 2010, a groundbreaking mission of firsts. First comprehensive archaeological mapping of the entire wreck site. First definitive identification of the wreck site boundaries. 
First high-definition sonar and optical imaging of the ship and her entire debris field, allowing for the virtual raising of the Titanic, bringing the ship to the public as never seen before, and providing the keys to unlocking the mysteries of Titanic and the events of her sinking. Utilizing the most advanced equipment available, RMST led a consortium of the world's leading oceanographers, scientists, and archaeologists to execute what's widely regarded as one of the most important deep-sea expeditions ever. NOAA, the National Park Service, Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute, the Institute of Nautical Archaeology, the Waite Institute. My own particular interest in Titanic is not so much the details of the expedition as it is everything we're doing to bring the story of Titanic back to the people at large. I think the biggest misconception on Titanic is that we're out there to find jewels and gold and treasures. We are out for treasures, but we're out for treasures of the mind. We're out for that story. That, that to us is much more important. We've got new tools, new robots, new cameras on a very capable robot that will take those cameras to the bottom to actually map enough of that shipwreck with enough high resolution that we can bring it back and uh, share it with everybody. The Titanic is a great story. It's a great human story. It's, a, of course, for us, it's a great adventure. I was one of the uh, members of the original expedition in 1985 that discovered the, uh, the wreck site. I think part of the lingering fascination is that we didn't ever really complete the the work that I thought we should do out there. I'm very proud to be part of this this team that uh, RMS Titanic has put together to, to go out and, and tackle this daunting task of trying to survey the wreck site. The 3D imagery will be able to provide us with detailed measurements that could be used to uh, help determine corrosion rates on the hull. I think that'll be very, very important to a long-term management plan for the wreck site. It's also a technology that Woods Hole and Premier and RMS Titanic want to bring to the public so the public can experience what it's like to dive at these wreck sites. Titanic as a subject matter and as a, and as a shipwreck is, is bigger than any one group. It really takes some dedicated individuals like those at Premier and RMS Titanic and at Woods Hole to kind of lead the way and, and help bring some of the archaeological community and also the scientific community back into the study in this wreck site. Before Expedition 2010, viewing the Titanic wreck site was akin to walking around Manhattan at midnight in the rain with a flashlight. Now with the data and imagery from the mission, the lights are on. Now the totality of the wreck site can be seen in its proper context. The map is the most detailed archeological map of its kind in the world. It will allow archeologists and scientists the opportunity to study the wreck site for years to come. The company has worked since 2006 to develop a state-of-the-art geographic information system that will act as a digital repository for all of the collective archaeological information, geo-positioning coordinates, and imagery generated by expeditions to the Titanic, including the massive data from the 2010 mission. This project embraces the Titanic wreck site in its totality, from the massive bow section down to the hairpins. RMST has placed most of the previously recovered artifacts back into the map in situ so that the site can be viewed and assessed in its discovery condition. Attribute tables of key information and video archives for each object are maintained, providing for easy reference and to permit the integrated study of the artifacts themselves, their cultural significance, their placement and function in the living ship, positional details of their recovery, and cross-reference to related objects. One such unknown piece has been identified as the reciprocating engine hatch. This object first showed up as a puzzling image on a sonar-generated map, a multi-story mountain of metal with an enormous square pit in the middle. Images were enhanced to show orientation, contours, and satellite features. Videos were inspected, revealing unique landmarks. A photo mosaic was created to study the objects as a whole. 
Careful analysis revealed that it was part of the ship's superstructure, the gigantic air shaft that ventilated the ship's reciprocating engine room. RMST is continuing the public outreach and education of her ongoing legacy through stewardship and historical responsibility. Together with its partners, the company is forging a new beginning to preserve, to study, and protect Titanic for future generations. We've only begun to scratch the surface of the one and only Titanic. And that brings us to today, as we plan for our next possibly most historically significant mission to Titanic in the next year. Before we move on, let me tell you a little about our organization, RMS Titanic Incorporated. Our mission is to preserve the legacy of Titanic, the wreck site, and all her passengers and crew. We were granted rights to the wreck of Titanic by a United States federal court order in 1994. This ruling named us the sole salver in possession to the wreck site which means we are the only ones in the world permitted to recover artifacts from the debris field of Titanic. Since 1987, we have conducted eight research expeditions to the wreck site and have recovered and conserved more than 5,500 artifacts. We also develop and display exhibitions that educate, entertain, and inspire audiences of all ages our exhibitions are in museums, exhibition centers, and other entertainment venues. Now, I'm going to take you through a demonstration that shows how Titanic sunk. It was a dark and cold night on April 14, 1912. There were two watchmen, Frederick Fleet and Reginald Lee, on duty that night to watch out for any danger that could harm the ship. Because of the dark conditions, the watchmen had a hard time seeing the ocean ahead of them. At 11.40 p.m., Titanic hit an iceberg which ripped a large hole in the side of the ship. The water eventually filled the entire ship, causing it to sink to the bottom of the ocean, two and a half miles below the surface, to be exact. The video we're watching is a recreation of how the ship hit the iceberg and sank that night. As you can see, as the ship was sinking, it split into two pieces before hitting the ocean floor. The video then shows a map of the bottom of the ocean where Titanic is currently located. Titanic was discovered in 1985, and since the ship broke into two pieces, the front of the ship, known as the bow, and the back of the ship, or the stern, were found 2,000 feet apart from each other. With Titanic breaking into two pieces, and the impact of the ship hitting the ocean floor, artifacts such as china, serving dishes, benches, glassware, and chandeliers just to name a few, were thrown out of the ship and scattered around the ocean floor. This location is known as the debris field. The debris field is an important location for us because it is the only area where we've been allowed to retrieve artifacts during our eight expeditions. Having the details surrounding the ship's position on the ocean floor today allows us to study Titanic and continue to revise our plan for conservation and management of the ship. On early expeditions, recovery efforts utilized a submersible. This submersible is called Nautil and is capable of housing three people plus equipment. Nautil can stay underwater for up to eight hours at a time. On these dives, we also used a smaller remote operated vehicle called Robin, which was used to explore and record tighter spaces than Nautil could fit. Here's how we created the map of Titanic's final position. The ROV Remora was equipped with HD cameras and lights used to take horizontal images of the bow and stern, as well as significant ship structures found in the debris field. Remora was remote controlled and operated from the research vessel on the surface. Two yellow torpedo-shaped AUVs, affectionately named Ginger and Marianne, were programmed to run back and forth over the 15 square mile debris field. Once programmed, the AUVs operated on their own without remote operation. Utilizing the data collected during the company's eight expeditions, we are developing items like this sonar map. 
As you can imagine, it's very dark on the ocean floor, so for many years it was impossible to get a full picture of the Titanic. But technology from the 2010 dive utilizing tiny photographs to build this mosaic? So now we are not only able to see a full picture of the wreck site, but we're also able to show how Titanic broke apart. Our team is currently layering this map with additional high-resolution video imagery to build a complete picture of the wreck site. Here are a few highlights from various expeditions. 1987 was the first dive to the wreck site that focused on recovery. Using the manned submersible Nautil, the expedition team recovered iconic artifacts including instruments from the stern docking bridge, a decorative cherub and several pursers or leather traveling bags. The 87 expedition also yielded one of two megaphones normally used for docking commands. This megaphone may have been used to coordinate the launching of the lifeboats on the night of the collision. Both megaphones were recovered from the debris field, one nearly intact in 1987 and the second broken in pieces in 2000. During the sinking, Titanic's two pursers stuffed leather bags like this, full of the jewelry and money that passengers had entrusted to the ship's safes. The pursers probably planned to load these valuables into the lifeboats and return them to passengers in New York, but both men were lost in the sinking. This leather Gladstone-style bag was recovered from the wreck site full of currency, coin, and jewelry. This graphic shows the leather Gladstone bag location in the debris field, and you can also see video of the bag resting on the ocean floor. The tanning process made leather inedible to microorganisms, thus protecting the contents of the bag. Almost all clothing, wood, and paper were recovered from inside leather receptacles and were protected from the harsh ocean floor environment. The following items were found inside that Gladstone bag. This exceptional bracelet was recovered in the Gladstone bag thought to have been in the purser's possession. The band is constructed of 15 karat rose gold with an overlay of almost pure silver. The name of the owner, Amy, is written in the script and set with diamonds. The owner has not yet been identified. The $5 silver certificate is the only issue of U.S. paper currency to feature a Native American as the central figure. Running Antelope, a chief in the Hunkpapa tribe of Lakata Indians, was a close advisor to Sitting Bull during the Plains Indian Wars. This 1899 $1 silver certificate was printed for more than two decades. Despite bearing the images of both Abraham Lincoln and Ulysses S. Grant, the $1 silver certificate has come to be known as the Black Eagle among collectors. Maybe the most exciting recovery of 87 was this bell that originally hung over Titanic's crow's nest on the foremast. The bell was used for warnings and alarms as well as general timekeeping. In the crow's nest at 11.38 p.m., lookout Frederick Fleet sees a massive iceberg approaching. He rings the warning bell three times and telephones the bridge, iceberg right ahead. In this graphic, you can see exactly where the crow's nest and bell were located on the ship. And this graphic shows the debris field with a green mark indicating the exact location of the bell when it was recovered. You'll see more of this bell in our next class. In the summer of 1994, we returned to the wreck site. On this expedition, we were able to recover items such as these binoculars. The binoculars were actually missing from the crow's nest, making it difficult to spot the iceberg that fateful night. Perhaps these would have been helpful in turning the events of that evening. However, they likely belonged to a passenger on board. In addition, hundreds of these perfectly preserved au gratin dishes were recovered from the sand, where they were found lined up like dominoes. The cabinet in which they were kept protected them during the sinking. Over time, the cabinet's wood rotted away leaving the dishes stacked neatly together in the sand. Here is where the au gratin dishes were found on the ship, as well as they were located in the debris field. In 1998, on our fifth expedition, we recovered a 17-ton section of the hull, which came to be known as the Big Piece. This is the largest and most significant section of the ship ever recovered. The big piece displays the extensive rivet work that went into the building of Titanic. Incredibly, about three million rivets were used in the ship's construction. 
The portholes visible on the big piece came from sea deck and were part of cabins C-79 and C-81. Cabin C-79 was part of a suite of rooms, which also included cabins C-77 and C-75, as well as two wardrobe rooms and a private bath. There were 12 suites of this type on Titanic. Examinations of the hull made it clear that Titanic is deteriorating more rapidly than previously thought. As a result, the ongoing scientific investigations into the physical events surrounding the sinking have become more urgent. The big piece can be seen in Titanic, the artifact exhibition in Las Vegas, and in Titanic, the virtual experience. Another exciting find from 98 is this chandelier from the first-class smoking room. It was found inside a drum-shaped motor house that contained the electrical equipment used to hoist baggage and goods with one of the Titanic's electrical cranes. The discovery of the chandelier inside this motor house is evidence of just how turbulent the sinking was and further demonstrates the vast scattering of components from Titanic's two halves. The first-class smoking room was located on the A-deck, as you see here. The green mark on this graphic shows where the chandelier was located in the debris field. The recovery video is amazing to watch. Look at where the chandelier was located. It is hard to believe it was found inside the drum-shaped motor. And finally, in the summer of 2010, the team returned to the wreck site in what is considered the most technologically advanced scientific expedition to Titanic ever organized. No artifact recovery took place. However, RMS Titanic Incorporated brought together a team of leading archaeologists, oceanographers, and scientists to take innovative measures to virtually raise Titanic, preserving the legacy of the ship for all time. It's what helped create the sonar map and provided some of the strongest imagery to date. Here are some of the video from the 2010 dive. Please take a moment to enjoy.
April 14, 1912, the day before Titanic sank, the ship's emergency Marconi radio had lost its voice. According to the Marconi Company protocol, its radio operators aboard the ship were directed to leave the fragile system for professionals to repair once they reached port. However, onboard Marconi radio operators Jack Phillips and Harold Bride decided to ignore protocol and worked for hours to nurse the wounded system back to health, giving the ship back its far-reaching voice, the only source of communication to the outside world. This was just hours before they struck the iceberg. Within 17 minutes after impact, the SS Carpathia had heard the Marconi's call, reversed course, full steam ahead to the aid of the sinking ship. And that leads me to the efforts for our next expedition. Until now, artifact retrieval from inside the ship has been off limits. But because of imminent decay, experts agree that action is needed beyond what has been previously allowed. The plan is to recover the Marconi wireless radio system, the very radio that called SOS, hailing the rescue ships that saved hundreds of passengers from the freezing North Atlantic Ocean. We'll leave you with a sneak peek of our upcoming expedition. The sea. Great civilizations bowed at its banks. Those who conquered it ruled the world. Until finally, the Invincible was born. 882 feet of unbreakable steel. The Titanic. A fortress for 3,547 souls. But for the sea, nothing is invincible. Now, more than a hundred years after the waters claimed the Titanic, it threatens to erase the ship from its floor within a few short years. In an attempt to save its legacy, a team of the world's greatest explorers and scientists will make history by opening the Titanic for the first time since it was swallowed whole to bring home the works of our ancestors before they crumble into the ocean's depths. Working against swift moving decay, we race to the seafloor to protect the Titanic, using every available technology to preserve our past. We fight to reclaim what the waters stole. We will bring home what was never the seas to take.